two, one. Hey, Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got my friend Laura on here, and uh, I tried to pronounce her last name, and I did it wrong. I thought there's only two ways, Vosika, Vosika, but it's Vosika. Vosika, yes. See, that was good. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Wonderful and a half, and then some to the 10th power infinity. That's as good as it can get. <laughs> it is. It's getting pretty good. I, I'm almost at Oh, you are. Everybody is. Yes, we're having a wonderful time because we live here in Minnesota for cripes sakes. Right, right. And we have a white Christmas, it looks like. We do, and it's finally getting cold, which is kind of weird. You know, here's a <laughs> quick little side story. I've been in the events business for a while, and we did an international event here. And it was in August, but people knew about Minnesota, so they brought their jackets because they were afraid of uh -huh. it being too cold. Were they from, from what, Florida? All over. Okay. All over the world, but it was funny because it's not that cold in August. Right, right. No, no. And on the other hand, I had a friend who showed up here in January. She had never been anywhere outside of, I think she grew up in Costa Rica, Ecuador, and then lived in Washington State in the Pacific Northwest. And she showed up here in, I don't know, something called a jacket in the Pacific Northwest. It wasn't good enough for uh January, Minnesota. Yeah, but it's not that bad. I mean, it gets hundreds here in the summer, and it's not that bad in the winter. It doesn't split your well, teeth. It that. depends on the week. You know, we've yeah. had those weeks where it's 35 below zero, and that's that's a little <laughs> nippy. It is good. <laughs> a little chilly. But I want to learn a little bit more about who you are and what you do and things. And of uh, our friend uh, Anthony's got this um, event, an alternative right. Right. New Year's Eve party where we can uh, connect and meet with people rather than getting intoxicated. <laughs> <laughs> what a change. <laughs> Could you believe it? So yeah. do you, are you married and got kids and all that kind of thing? Um, I am not married, but I do have kids. I have nine kids. What? What? <laughs> no wonder you're not married. <laughs> um, I, I was. I was married long enough to have nine yeah, kids. Yeah, exactly. But that's a lot of work taking care of nine kids yeah. plus a hubby. Oh. <laughs> so let them go. Well, you know, it, it's, I've, I've often told people when they think that nine kids is a lot of work, what they're thinking of is they've got two or three little kids at home and two or three little kids is a lot of work. But as they get older, you know, they're off to school, they're off to sports, they're at band, they're playing with friends, they're helping me take care of the little kids, you know, right. one of them might be feeding a bottle to the babies. Um, so it's, it's really, I, I've often said having four kids is much, much harder than having nine. And, and I stand by that. That makes sense. And, that, that, yeah, and at this point, I like that. five of them, four of them are out of the house. So, so business-wise, it's by delegating. You're supposed to delegate instead of taking is, on yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. and I, I think that's good for them. You know, they yeah. learn to pitch in. I think we spent a couple of decades where kids really didn't do chores the way they used to. And I know I didn't do many chores, and I don't think it was good for me. So I was kind of forced to say, I have to do things differently. My kids really have to help. And, you know, I think the, the results are showing they're growing up to be really good kids and productive citizens and, you know, yep. quite capable of taking care of themselves. Responsible rather than entitled? Yeah. Absolutely. I like it. I like yes. it. Two yeah. thumbs up. Yes. <laughs> And if I had more thumbs, I'd give, <laughs> I'd give more. So where yeah. do you live? Are you on the, on the, over in St. Paul on the east side over no, there? No, I'm, I'm in Brooklyn Park. So oh, you're just, the... you're kind of by me. Oh, where are you? <laughs> I'm right now in Minnetonka, but I lived in Fridley, so. Okay. Yeah, and I work down not far from Minnetonka. I teach at uh, Kramer School of Music down in Eden Prairie there. Which is a great segue into what you do, because I understand you're, you're a musical artist. I... I started on trombone. Actually, the whole truth is I started on organ. I hated it. I got kicked out of organ lessons for being the most uncooperative student she'd had in 25 years. And I was very proud of myself. <laughs> and uh, then my grandfather played trombone. And so I, I sort of became enamored of that. And I started trombone when I was 11. And starting in probably seventh grade, so I guess the very next year, I've just been buying instruments and adding instruments year by year. So at this point, I did major in trombone, and I played for quite a few years in big bands and pit orchestras for ballets, for musicals. And now I mostly play harp and flute, and I still wow. teach all the instruments. Well, I don't know nothing about music. I tried playing the guitar, but it's so complicated uh -huh. with all those strings and all those frets and 
figured right. out which which right. string to part. Uh, it's too much for me. It's complicated. I need just uh, how digital. How long did you try for? Oh, probably three to six months. Okay. Long yeah. enough to make my fingers bleed. Yeah. All that stuff. It, it takes a little longer than that. Some sometimes, you know, it, it depends. Some people just take to instruments unbelievably. Well, you know, doing something like the slide trombone, that's not a you, you you got a lot of variable there, right? Of where you're supposed to be. Um, technically, the basics of trombone, there are seven positions. And it's actually not that, okay, I shouldn't say it's not that hard to play it. It is. But the basic seven positions, and, and I say that in comparison to other instruments, flute is ridiculously easy compared to trombone. French horn is probably even harder than trombone. Oh. Um, but the positions themselves, it's all the way in is first. You line up the uh, slide grip with the bell, that's third. You line up the end of what we call the stocking with the bell, that's fourth. All the way out is sixth. And then second and fifth are just in between. Oh. So, see? Easy. Easy. <laughs> but now you're playing the harp. That's got all, the harp's got all sorts of strings. How do you manage that? How do I manage what? <laughs> the harp. It's got all sorts of strings on it. Well, um, actually, <laughs> I, I don't know if I can pull this into view. I didn't know if we'd want to be talking about it. Can you see the harp here? I see the end of it. Here, can, I see it. It's oh, got, oh, there you go. Now you now can I can see, see all, you. right? I can see okay, a bunch of strings, yeah. This string right here is blue. Well, your finger is just out of that, but uh, can can you see up here? I can't see the colors any. Yeah, a little bit. Your thumb is just, just off the just edge a there. Little bit. Yeah, Anyways. I know. I'm looking at the picture, and the the colors are hard to see. But this string that I'm running my finger up and down, this is blue, and mm. on the harp, the Fs are always either blue or black, and the C mm. strings are oh, okay. always red. So it's color coded. Yeah. I get it color coded and then it just goes in alphabetical order so after c you've got d e f we're on the blue string in between f you go up to g and then you start over with a b and you're back to the red string c so, yes. <laughs> fries my brain you now you said that you also get involved with photography a little bit and i that's another thing that i can't comprehend because of the variable between the f stop and the aperture opening and natural sunlight and indoor sunlight and magic right. hour light and there's so many variables I, it's I hard for me <laughs> for, first of all um i i confess i use the automatic settings on my camera i have not really delved into that so like this one for me it's <laughs> yeah it, for me it's more about framing the picture yeah but it, it's most of the actual photography is done by my friend chris we work together and have have you been over to the Blue Harbor Arts Center? Um, once, yes. Okay. Was was our photography up when you went there? I think it was, but I didn't really focus okay. on it. Right on on the downstairs level, the lower level, we have our Scottish photography, and so all of it is set in castles, ruins oh, cool. in Scotland or on the shore in Scotland. Because my writing, which is another thing I do, is all set in medieval, well, it's set in medieval and modern Scotland. But I've delved quite deeply into Scottish history about 1296, 1286 to about 13, 1319. And um, so let me, let me see. This isn't a great example, but that is my photography on the cover of my book. And so this is, it's called Urquhart Castle, mm -hmm. and it is on the shores of Loch Ness. Ooh. And so when Chris <laughs> and I went to Scotland, we actually went to the lands of Robert the Bruce, and that's southwest Scotland. So Dumfries and Galloway. And we did a lot of photography. Uh, some of it was in central Scotland on a different trip. So we've got a piece we call Finlaird's Sunrise, where uh, we had actually just gotten off the plane. We'd been on the plane all night, and we went to this ruin of a castle called Finlaric that was the home of the Campbells. And uh, the sunrise was just coming up, and so I was wearing a medieval dress. And this is why I can't take the photography, because a lot of times I'm in the picture. Um, although we call it the mysterious woman, my face is never showing, because we're trying to tell a story that's, you know, apart from the actual person in, in the picture. And so I'm in a full medieval dress uh, with these billowing sleeves, and I'm standing facing the sunrise, and it's just this burst of sun. 
coming up over the castle ruins. That, is that in Blue Harbor there right now? I'm Yes, that one should be up at Blue Harbor. Oh, that's right cool. Now. Yeah. So yeah. there's a lot of coincidental stuff that's going on with the photography. I got this Costa Rican photography retreat that we're doing, and then you, we're, we're together we're doing this thing for New Year's over uh -huh, at Blue right, Harbor Art right. Center and the music. Yeah. I was involved with magic for many years. In fact, that's where the Magic Brad name oh, came from. I, I thought you were still doing I, it. I still gig here and there. I'm doing it okay. uh, New Year's. We're going to do some magic okay. and comedy. That, but that's what I thought. It's not my full-time income anymore. I'm sort of semi-retired and I do, retarded and I do internet marketing stuff uh -huh. and okay. still do the magic, of course, so certainly. So, well, very cool. Do you have like a website, I'm assuming, that um, you I can... Have, I have a few websites. My photography is at www.emmanuelslight.com and we also have, I think it's a WordPress blog, so it would be emmanuelslight.wordpress.com. And then my books are at my site, bluebellstrilogy.com or bluebellschronicles.com or lauraposeca.com. They all point you to the same site. Okay. And then what I sort of use as my main site at this point is my blog, which is bluebellstrilogy.blogspot.com. And I actually do have a giveaway going on right now, so I'll, I'll hold this up. Um, my fifth book is coming out, so I'm doing a giveaway of this one, Food and Feast. This has a long subtitle. It's Food and Feast in the World of the Bluebells Chronicles, a gastronomic, historic, poetical, musical romp in time. And time is spelled T-H-Y-M-E because my whole series is a time travel story. Oh, really? This is, yeah, this is, uh, it's got over 200 recipes, both medieval and modern. So, you know, I had to throw in that spelling of time. That's pretty cool. I got to funny, you know. I gotta connect you with my wife. She's interested in the whole time bending thing and all that. Oh, kind is of stuff. she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she'd probably like them then. She is a life coach and shaman. Oh wow! Does some bizarre okay. stuff. Uh huh. So, if you would put those links in our little uh, Facebook page too, and I will put them yeah. on this thing. What I do with these uh, videos is I put an intro and an outro on them, then I beam them up to YouTube, and then I propagate them out on various blogs and websites and put them out there for people to find. Okay, great. So that's my marketing method. <laughs> but Laura, so I appear... have to find your YouTube channel. I'll I'll send it out there. If you just okay. if you just Google Magic Brad or YouTube, those two words, you'll find it. So okay, I think I had actually stumbled across it already. That's uh, my key word is Magic Brad. So if you ever want to know what Brad does on the internet, that's what okay. it is. <laughs> so I appreciate you taking the time to be on Synergy Cafe today, and uh, I will get this stuff beamed up there, and we will see you on New Year's for our. Alternative, alternative, what is, he's calling it something else, conscious. Conscious, conscious celebration yes. of New Year's Eve, I think it is. Yeah, Very cool. so do you want me to leave those links on the Magic Brad Facebook page or in the private message? Just where, where we were messaging before there. Yeah, just okay. I'll find Sounds them too, and I will put them okay. in there. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Peace, love, and happiness. Okay. Be well. Well, we'll see you New Year's Eve. Okay, thanks. Bye.